Hello, everybody. Good morning and welcome to our Monday Motivation Spotlight. Greeting you every Monday, same time, same place. Actually, today's in a different place if you notice that I'm in a different background. So if my light is not 100% perfect, please forgive me. So welcome, whether you're joining us live, which is awesome and always better, or whether you're watching the recording. I'm Leslie Kaplan, welcome you here today. Co-sponsored, as you know, by ACI with thanks. And this month we have a new co-sponsor with thanks to Nishika Honey. And I'm going to read their tagline because it's an awesome tagline. And Nishika, if you all know, means kiss in Hebrew. The bee people spreading sweetness and inclusion one kiss at a time. So I think that's really sweet and really chamud. So thank you to Nishika. So today we've got an awesome lineup for you as we do every single week. I wish that I could say to you that Am Yisrael didn't have any challenges this week, but we still had challenges and ongoing challenges. And why do I say that? Because I remind you that this program was started because of the war and in order to bring us inspiration, motivation at the same time, also to give us uh, exposure, to give exposure to different businesses, owners, or amotot. So what do we have lined up for you today? Today we have a fantastic lineup, as always. I always try to have a great lineup. Today we have my friend and colleague, Gila Slonim, who I've been honored to know for a couple of years. Many of you know Gila. Gila helps people and women stay calm, happiness, balance, and harmony via her stones, as we all know. And she'll tell us in more detail about the Avner Choshen crystals and everything she does. And Gila will also share with us that today I happened to approach her on April 8th, and it turned out it's a special day for her too. So she will share it with us why. I didn't know, of course, that it was a special day. So I guess everything is just mina shamayim. So Gila, thank you for being our guest today. And please shoot, share with us lots of inspiration, 30 minutes. And I remind you to keep yourselves on mute if you're joining live. And you're welcome to use the chat to ask Gila any questions or if you want to comment or anything, or to share your business details and links in the chat. Thank you, Gila. Good morning. Well, thank you, Leslie. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, ladies, for joining. Um, and it's really a pleasure to be here. So it was funny. I, I sent out an email to my group, and I wrote down April 8th is a special date. And then somebody wrote back to me, and she said, I know it's not your birthday, but I wonder what it is. And I figured if anybody was going to know what it is, she might actually know because we were in school together. Now, when I say in school together, I'm talking about I was in grade five. And when I was in grade five, on April the 8th, it was when um, my parents took us for a trip to Israel. My very first trip to Israel, we left Australia on the 8th of April. So I was very lucky. Um, and as you know, before Pesach, and so we spent Pesach in Israel. Um, and this date is stuck in my mind. And that is because it was the beginning of actually the new chapter, or maybe it was a whole new sequel for me, where I understood um, during this trip, that this is where I'm going to spend my life. So we came to Israel. My parents decided we're going to do it the Israeli way. So we rented an apartment on corner King George and Hillel Street, if you know that area. And the block of apartments is still standing today. And I've been back to visit. It wasn't luxurious. In fact, it was, you know, very, very, very simple and basic. But we didn't care. We had such a good time when we were in Israel. And you know, and anywhere we went to visit during that trip, I said, ah, this is where I could live. Oh, um, I, I, and, you know, we went to Kibbutz Lavi, I'm going to live here. Jerusalem, we're in the apartment, I'm going to live here. And I can't remember all the stops. I was in grade five or going back a good few years. But I was so enthused and I just had this clear understanding that this is where I'm going to live. So it did take me a while to get back here. Okay, it was like over 30 years after my gap, you know, till I actually, no, till I made Aliyah, took me a good, good few years beyond that once I had finished school. But it's incredible that when I was in grade five, I understood that this is where I want to live. And I think 
Sorry, Leslie, I can hear all the beepings and it takes me out of oh, Yeah, yeah, that's what I said to you. You may hear it. Anyway, it will stop. That's more in the beginning. Uh, okay, thanks. Don't worry about uh, it. Okay. So, you know, um, I I feel that, that um, you know, in fifth grade, a child is capable of making a very big decision. And had I not remembered that today, I would never think that a, that a child so young could make such a momentous decision. But I want to tell you that, thank God, I've been living in Israel for over 30 years. And, you know, with my husband, my children, I have grandchildren here, everything. And, and I am so appreciative to have had the courage and determination to come here because I want to tell you there was plenty of opposition in all different in all different ways along the way. Now, to know that it's a good decision, I mean, obviously for me, but when I've taken my children back to Australia, right, we've been back numerous times because the family's there, basically, um, and they say, oh, thank you, mummy, for making Aliyah. We thank you to our parents so much for making Aliyah. There are two reasons for that. One is because they, um, this is where they know they belong in, in Israel, one. And two is because otherwise they would have had to do it themselves. And they wonder whether they would have been able to pull themselves together to be able to get up, leave the family and come. Now, I am sure that I probably most of you here understand that feeling because I think we're all English speakers, many of us living in Israel, and we made that move. So I think that um, that level of determination that we all had coming to Israel is something that helps us move forward in whatever area we, we are involved in. So whether it's communal or whether it's personal, etc., I think it gives us a certain strength and a certain knowledge that we are doers, we are people of action. So I think, first of all, all of us who have made Aliyah can have a clap. I really think so. <laughs> We've done a great job getting here, making here, and starting our lives. So you shall call. Okay. I want. I said sometimes, you know, I realized from that I was. I don't know where I had the wisdom, but I understood that sometimes it's very smart to keep your plans to yourself. And when I was a little girl, I was eleven years old, and I knew that this is something that I'm not sharing. I didn't share it with anybody, and it was something that was dormant in my mind. So um, it was, it was, it's still a good lesson for me today because today maybe I talk more about what I'm planning to do, but sometimes it's a good idea to keep under the radar. And the other thing is that patience is really a virtue, and don't keep your, don't let your eye move from your goal. Okay, slowly, slowly. Now I'll introduce myself a little bit more now that you know. How I got here um, to be living in Israel and to be, you know, I'm just passionate about living in Israel, and that is why, um, and and that is why I'm actually involved in lots of activities for the sake of Eretz Israel. Anyway, today I'm Gila Slodim. I work with Avnei Choshen and Crystals. And among my different studies, I'm working with social work and psychotherapy, family therapy. And so I've always wanted to bring this through healing. They can also be emotional medications, okay? So it's like if somebody's feeling down or lacking self-confidence, you're going to give briefly, Alex. How that, that work good. So I have like a bunch of crystals. So surprise, surprise. I'll just show you a couple. Um, so each crystal has a meaning. And through a person's choice of the crystals, I have like over 100 different crystals, but through a, choice, a person's choice of their crystals, I am able to understand what's going on for them, what's going on physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, in really a very beautiful, holistic way. So I'll give you an example. Okay. Um, yesterday, we um, there was a little girl um, who I saw her assessment. Okay. She chose the stones and I saw her assessment. And this 
this little girl, what was she, she? I could see very clearly it was important for her to assert her individuality. That was something very important to her. She would do this at the expense of being nice to other people. I could also see her qualities of being very bright, but emotionally there was a dissonance because emotionally she was 10 years old, but mentally she was really very, very clever child. So it gave me an understanding of what I have to work with. I will, right? I give her crystals to help her to try and balance her out a little bit more um, and to try and help her come to terms with her individuality in addition to counselling and talking to her and working, her, working through issues with her. And that can be done over time. But that's just a, a, a sense of what I would be doing with this little girl, okay? Now, I just wanted, to, it's important that you understand what does that mean working with crystals and how does this whole process work? It's absolutely mind-blowing to me. After over 10 years working with crystals, it's still mind-blowing that I can understand so much and help people in such an incredible way through the crystals. Now, I want to give you some thoughts on how I get myself motivated and moving on projects. Projects being cleaning Pesach cupboards, planning a course on crystals, and anything that could go in between is, for me, a project, okay? Big, little, anything. So I am a big believer in deadlines and frameworks, okay? Now, I'll give you an example. I... Came back from overseas. I had I was on a trip overseas for Eretz Israel, actually, on Shlichot a couple of weeks ago. And then when I got back to Israel, it was like I need to knuckle down and do work because I've got lots of things to do. And it was like this whole bunch of things that I had to do, but I, I wasn't exactly sure where to start. I floundered. I didn't have a clear goal other than to get back to work and get things going, et cetera, et cetera. But if I had returned to a very clear schedule, okay, which had things very clearly listed for me, it would have been a lot easier. The other thing I know, and please God, I will do next time, is to line up for myself a webinar one week later. So therefore, I know I get back, I have to hit the ground running because in one week I have a webinar, I have to do the fly, I have to get the website, I have to do the marketing, I have to do all of those things that I know how to do, but I have a deadline. And for me, the deadlines and the dates are the beginning of the process. So um, I think I think that that's, that's like, just for me, that's, that's really important. And um, I like to recommend that with my clients as well. Very often, um, we ha I had this one lady and she's like, I can't get things done. I said, give me a date. When are you starting it? When are you starting? And when we put down a date and we put down a time and we got very concrete, it began to happen. And today she runs a class every single day at nine o'clock in the morning at 9.15. She's running her class. It's amazing. It's amazing from not being able to or whatever, but slowly having those deadlines and, and things very in a very clear fra framework. I want to tell you because these deadlines, uh, calendars, I'm a calendar person. I have a, a, a diary. I got rid of one diary, I have to tell you, because I used to, I, it's sitting in the corner of my desk, this little diary here, okay, and it's blank completely blank because I bought it because I'm going to need it. But I went to my Google calendar and I just find that that's what I'm working with apart from the other two calendars on my desk. And this is one of my calendars that I have to share with you that I'm going to talk to you about that I've prepared a calendar dealing with the up now fashion because I'm such a calendar person. And, you know, like, I don't know if it happens to you, but it's like, oh, no, we've just started April. Who's birthday? When's it going to be? What's it going to happen? Etc. Just moving my screen. I think the sun's coming in. Um, so I made this perpetual calendar. Um, and that's like such a me thing to do. But in the process, I want to tell you what happened was I said, it's it's a me thing to do. It wasn't something that I had to do for work, even though I created it and included all the 12 of an hour and researched it because I want to say which which stone relates to which month. 
And I went and went back to the Sefa Yitzira, one of the very old, old books to see what they talked about the stones and the tribes, etc. And I gave an explanation of each of the stones on each of the months. And so I did it. I mean, if I do things, then I'm going to do it properly. But it wasn't something that had a deadline. It's just a project that I'm on. It's like, you know, we have these projects in the background. So that's what this was. It was a background project. Now, it's, it took a lot of work to pull it together. And... What happened was it slept. It just kept on going and kept on going, um, and I need to fix it. And then I put it down because something else urgent, would, something urgent would come up, or something more important would come up. And you know, it wasn't actually finishing. It wasn't happening. It was like still in the middle. And then I have a business coach, and I believe in business coaches. Like Leslie's a business coach. I believe in um, business coaches firmly because um, they keep you in line. They kept my business coach look, looked up and she kept me in line. She said, Gila, it's now calendar season. I said, but, you know, it's a perpetual calendar. It doesn't make a difference. It's always relevant. She said, it's calendar season. People are buying calendars. Get it finished. When I had that deadline there, I passed that on to my graphic artist who, you know, I can, what can I expect from her if I'm taking ages to to review it or to choose this or to do that? I can't say quickly. But once we had our deadline and we were both heading in the right same direction, it worked and a calendar came out. Um, and it's, by the way, it's on my website. You can download it for free on the website. You can buy a beautiful coffee, okay? But if you want to download it, you're more than welcome for free and it's got all the he Hebrew, English, all the dates and you write in the birthdays, etc. So I'll put later on, I'll put the um, link in if you would like. Now, I want to tell you the importance of having a coach as well. Um, if you're in business or something, you someone to be responsible to, somebody that gives you direction, somebody that's objective, to my mind, that's something really important. And I know, again, when I've been floundering work-wise, I don't know, um, I, I, I'm with my coach and um, I wanted to, you know, I, they motivate me with my own ideas, et cetera, and adding on to them and broadening, et cetera. Um, I highly recommend, and I think Leslie's here and she's wonderful, you know, and I've been in Leslie's sessions and they're fantastic and I highly recommend this, okay? Now, the other thing that I want to tell you, which for me has been something very important, um, when we're in a challenging situation, it could be an emotional stump, a general challenge, or whatever it may be, and we need to, we know we need to get things done, but you know that feeling of just like, I can't be bothered, and I'm schlepping, and I've got that down feeling, or whatever. For example, this is a COVID example, but to me, it was like really such a strong thing. So um, during COVID, you know, we were pretty isolated. And my youngest daughter with her two kids said to me, you know, we're going to come for Shabbat. So that's very exciting. You know, we love having the kids, the grandchildren, et cetera, for Shabbat. And then she called me a few days before. And if you remember that COVID thing that, you know, I've been, she said, my good friend from school came down with COVID. I think it's not a good idea that we come. I said, fine. And I was really surprised. Why didn't I go downhill, right? It's something that could make me like, oh, Shabbat, it's just going to be my husband and I and the kids aren't coming and whatever else it may be. And, you know, so looking forward to the grandchildren, okay? And it could have really caused me a slump. And I said, I just, it was like a little bump on the way and I kept on going, which is not something necessarily typical. And I said, what is it? What, what made that difference for me? And I said, you know what it was? And you're going to laugh. In the morning, I went out into my garden and I had I had planted new trees. I like doing, I like the garden. I like nature, crystals, nature, everything. And I had gone outside and done something that was so good for my soul. I had started my day with positive, good energy. Okay. Planting the trees or planting the flowers, whatever it may have been. And I want to say that from that, is such a strong lesson for me of do things that are good for your soul as well. And sometimes we say, okay, when I finish this task, then I will, um, you know, do what I wanted to do, plant the flowers or read the book or whatever it may be. I want to suggest start the day with that. 
say, okay, I'm giving myself in the morning half an hour to go walking, to read my book, to speak to my whatever on the telephone, whatever it is, start with something that's going to give you positive energy and then let that positive energy um, keep you keep you strong through the day. Let that imbue, you have that feeling, have that wonderful um, enjoyment pushing you through your day and helping you to get something else done. Okay, I think that that is very important. Um, the other thing I want to say to you ladies is the following. I once attended a big um, a, 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 a event by this guy by the name of Nir Duvdavani. Some of you may have heard of him. He's a well-known businessman and, and a business coach, etc. Coach, etc. And he said something that really um, resonated with me. He said, basically, he said, if you don't bring your talent to the world, then it's not going to be there. In other words, God has given us, or you have a certain shlichut, a certain something, a certain talent, which it's up to you to bring to this world. And it's not fair. It's actually not fair of you not to share this with the rest of the world. Okay. So when I started to get involved in the crystals, I almost I feel that it's a shlichut. Um, once because you'll see when I talk about the crystals, I like light up. It's something that I need to be sharing with the world. Okay, so I need to be telling you about this fabulous stone, this fluorite stone that we have here, which helps me when I'm feeling overwhelmed. And it's also good for electromagnetic frequency. So it's like sits near my computer. But um, I just threw that in. not a big deal doesn't matter yes it does matter you've been put in this world to bring your talents full to share things with people um but that each each of us each of us have a very special talent and share it with the world okay and if you don't know what it is if you're not sure where it is what makes you happy inside? What gives you that warm, cozy feeling? What What is it? Okay. And, and if you're not clear, be in touch. Let's discuss it. Let's work it out. Okay. And believe me, you're going to just shine through what much more when you're doing that in every sphere of your life. Um, and the other thought that I want to share with you quickly is, is something that's important to know. I think it's important to know. Um, many years ago, I saw this, you know, this lady in my, when I was working in an office, whatever, and she had a very pretty necklace on. So I said to her, I said, wow, that's a beautiful necklace. You know, something she said, yes, I bought it for myself for my birthday. Like you bought it for yourself. Okay, fine. She said, yeah, I know that if I want something for my birthday, I am going to go out and buy that something. What does that mean? She said, is my family going to buy me a gift? I don't know. All right. Are they there? The family is there for her, obviously. But, you know, they, instead of relying on her family to make her happy and to give her this gift, she was doing it herself. She knew what she wanted. She wanted a gift for her birthday. She wanted to have something that she liked. And she went out and she bought it for herself. What I want to say here is we shouldn't be reliant on other people for our happiness. If there's something that we want, if there's something that's important to us, don't wait that somebody else will make it happen, okay? Don't wait for that. Do it yourself, okay? There's something that I like. There's something that's important. I don't I don't want to actually, during Cholamay and Pesach, I don't want to spend the day at home. I want to go out. Now, um, if I'm waiting on somebody to say, will you come here with me? Can we go there? Whatever. I could still be waiting. If I want to go out and do something, I'm going to have a look and say, okay, these are the things. This is what I want to do. Do I need to go with somebody? Then I am going to initiate. I'm going to say, would you like to come with me? And if not, I could go on my own. I can enjoy my own company. And today, I think that we could also learn, um, I find that I enjoy my own company as well because I can listen to what I want. There are so many 
fabulous podcasts and things to listen to today that even if I have to drive for an hour on my own because there's somewhere I want to go, doesn't bother me at all because I can listen to what I want in the car, make good use of my time. So I want to um, I want to really encourage everybody to find what it is that they want and to go for it not to wait and not to um, try and be looking for, to other people for different things. Now, quickly, I want to share with you a few things about from the crystals because that's me. So I said, okay. like one minute, one, two minutes left. Okay. So if you can fit it into that. Perfect. I can always fit into that. First of all, I'm a big believer in rose quartz. Okay. okay. I can see Toby clapping there. Rose quartz is a stone, stone of self-love. <laughs> because in order for us to get things done, in order for us to feel good about ourselves, to feel good about, we have to do things to accomplish what we want to accomplish. We need to feel good about ourselves. Look, it's even the shape of a heart. So rose quartz is number one. We're lacking. We don't have enough energy. Cough, ro uh, this is a quartz crystal. It's an incredible stone. It gives us physical energy. So if you need energy, Grab yourself a quartz crystal. If you want to concentrate more, <laughs> Eva's showing us a thing. The tiger eye is a great stone to help us concentrate more. So that, I have these all on my desk, of course. Okay. So that's just a few couple of stones. Ah, and another one I've got here in my hand. This is an amethyst. I don't know if you can see that it's a light purple tinge. I'm an amethyst freak. I love them. There's one in my office up there, if you can see. And Eva's got hers too. And Mira is one of my students, so she's got all the stones there. <laughs> um, the amethyst is a great stone for calm. So sometimes we need to calm down and we need just that peace, tranquility. So the amethyst is a great stone to help us through all of that. So I want to thank you, Leslie, for this wonderful opportunity. Thank you, ladies, for all being here, for listening to me, etc. cetera. Um, and it's been amazing <laughs> for me anyway. I hope you've enjoyed Great. Okay, thank I you, Gila. Any questions? Yeah, thank you, Gila. It was awesome listening to you, to your personal story, which is what it's also all about. I tell people, please share your personal story, seeing this is a series related to Alia, and of course, hearing a little bit the tip of the iceberg about your stones. So anyone that wants to learn more detail about stones, about crystals, Avna Khoshan, be in contact with Gila, just type her name on the internet and you'll get led to her website and she can open up a whole world for you of Avna Khoshan. So I thank you for joining us today. Before you leave, so two announcements. Number one, next week we have another special guest, Dr. David Leitner who's going to be joining us. Some of you may know him. He was actually one of the guests that I wanted to bring on in the very beginning, close to the beginning, but he was involved in security in the place where he lived. And that's exactly when the war started. So he was not able to do it. And now he's more free to do it. So join me and us next week on the Monday Motivation Spotlight. If you've missed any of the recordings, I invite you to look at the YouTube or Spotify at my channels and please subscribe or follow. That way you also won't miss anything when we upload new editions. Thank you again to our co-hosts, ACI, and of course to our sponsors, Nashika Honey, this month. And a big thank you to my special guest, Gila Slonim. Thank you so much for joining us. And an even bigger thank you, or maybe the same as Gila, to all of you who joined today. So thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you next week. Next week will be our last session before Pesach. We're going to be having then a Pesach break. It's actually two weeks off, which is going to be very strange, but we will be busy with other things. And don't forget to join us again once Pesach ends. So look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you, Gila. Thank you to all of you. And Ami Chai, have an awesome, safe week. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Leslie.